Here I've got this nice like calculus two style problem where we look at the convergent or divergent properties of two infinite series. And in fact, what we will find is that one of our infinite series converges and the other one diverges, although they look very, very similar. And furthermore, this tells us that we have found something close to like a turnover point between convergence or divergence. Okay, let's look at our first series. So we've got the sum as n goes from 2 up to infinity of 1 over natural log of n to the power of natural log of n. And the second series we'll look at almost looks exactly the same. It's the sum as n goes from 2 to infinity of 1 over natural log of n to the natural log of natural log of n. Okay, so let's maybe look at this top one first and we'll investigate it, its convergence using the integral test. So that means we want to look at the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over the natural log of x to the natural log of x dx. Okay, nice. And how will we approach this? Well, we're going to approach it with a u substitution. So maybe since we see natural logs all over the place, it might be nice to have u equal natural log and see how that change of variables helps us out. So let's see, we're going to say u is equal to ln x. Well, that's the same thing as saying that x is equal to e to the u. But if x is equal to e to the u, that means dx is equal to e to the u du. And then furthermore, when x is equal to 2, that tells us that u is equal to natural log of 2. And then as x approaches infinity, that tells us that u is also approaching infinity. So that way we can take care of our bounds of integration with these two little calculations here. Okay, so let's see what our transformed integral looks like. We'll have the integral from natural log of 2 up to infinity of e to the u over u to the u du. Okay, nice. Now, what should we do from here? I think maybe our best strategy is to split this into two integrals, one which is over a finite region, and another one that we can compare to something that obviously converges. And I guess I let the cat out of the bag. This thing will converge. So what should our turnover point be? Well, I think there are a bunch of choices, but I'm going to choose e squared. So this is going to be the integral from the natural log of 2 to e squared of e to the u over u to the u du. So that's a finite number, which means the value of this is not contributing to whether or not this integral converges, and thus it's not contributing to whether or not this sum converges. What will contribute to the convergence is what's happening at the tail. And here we will start that tail at e squared, because that's where we ended this, and we'll have e to the u over u to the u du. Okay, nice. Now we're going to make the following observation, and that is if u is bigger than or equal to e squared, then that tells us that 1 over u is less than or equal to 1 over e squared. So that means we can replace this second integral using this fact, maybe just to really spell it out, we can use this fact where we raise the exponent in the denominator to the power of u on both sides. And then, well, again, to make it look exactly like what we've got over there, we could multiply that numerator by e to the u as well. And then, while we're at it, after some easy simplification, we see that we have bound our object above by 1 over e to the u. And that's only if u is bigger than e squared, but that's okay because that's the region where, you know, we're operating at the moment. Okay, so let's see what we've got. After this substitution, this will be less than or equal to the integral from the natural log of 2 up to e squared of e to the u over u to the u du, and then plus the integral from e squared up to infinity of 
one over e to the u, but that's just e to the minus u du. But like I said, this is over a finite region and it's a continuous function. So that means we get a finite number for this, we'll get a finite number for that. That's pretty obviously a convergent integral. So that makes this whole thing less than plus infinity. In other words, it converges. So we have bound it above by something converges. I guess we should also say that maybe it's bound below by zero. Okay, good. But if this integral converges, that means that this sum over here is in fact convergent. So we'll say that this guy converges. Okay, now let's compare that to this other one where we have an extra evaluation of natural log in the denominator. Now we're ready to explore the convergence or divergence of this one in the denominator. Like I said, we've got an extra evaluation of natural log. We're going to use the integral test like we did before. I've set up my integral. And in fact, we'll use a substitution which is pretty similar to what we did before as well. Let's let u equal natural log of natural log of x. Well, what does that tell us that x is? So x is equal to e to the e to the u. In other words, the exponential function e to the u composed inside of the exponential function. All right, well that tells us that dx is equal to e to the u times e to the e to the u du using the chain rule. Then what happens to the bounds of integration? When x is equal to 2, that tells us that u is equal to natural log of natural log of 2. Then furthermore, as x approaches infinity, then u will also approach infinity. Okay, so those are all of the parts that we need in order to translate this into a different integral. So here we'll have the integral from natural log of natural log of 2 up to infinity. So dx will be replaced with this object. So that'll be e to the u times e to the e to the u. Then what happens in the denominator? Well, let's see. We've got natural log of x. Well, I haven't written out what natural log of x is, but that's pretty easy. Notice that natural log of x is equal to e to the u. And then we've got that is to the power natural log natural log of x, which is our u. So in other words, we have e to the u all to the u power. So we've got something that looks like that. Okay, so now using exponent rules, I can actually simplify that down quite a bit. Notice that this is this going to be the integral from natural log of natural log of 2 up to infinity of e to the e to the u minus u squared plus u du, like that, where I have put everything in the exponent of this copy of e. And then obviously using, using exponent rules to collapse that to e to the u squared. Okay, what are we going to do from here? I think maybe our best bet is to use something called the test for divergence. So the test for divergence says if the integrand does not approach zero as the variable approaches infinity, then this thing cannot converge. So let's look at the limit as u approaches infinity of e to the e to the u minus u squared plus u. But I think it's pretty clear that that is equal to infinity. Maybe let's spell out a little bit of why that limit is equal to infinity. Well, notice if the exponent is trending towards infinity, then this whole thing will trend towards infinity. So that means we can really just approach this exponent, the limit as u goes to infinity of e to the u minus u squared plus u. But now we can make an approximation. We can approximate e to the u with its cubic Taylor polynomial. And we will get something that is less than or equal to what we started with. So this that means this thing is bigger than or equal to the limit as u goes to infinity of 1 plus u plus u squared over 2 plus u cubed over 3 factorial minus u squared plus u. 
But look at what we've got here. We've got a polynomial. The leading term has a positive coefficient, which means this thing is trending off towards infinity. But then this is larger than what we just investigated. So that means that this thing is also trending off towards infinity. That means this exponent is trending towards infinity, which means this entire thing is trending towards infinity. So that means by the test for divergence, we know that this integral right here must diverge. So let's maybe write that over here. We see that this thing diverges. So what have we found? Well, we found some sort of tipping point. Notice if we've got one over natural log to the natural log, we're good to go. But if we have one over natural log to the natural log of the natural log, then we are not good to go, we diverge. So this extra evaluation of natural log in this exponent causes us to tip over from convergent to divergent. And that's a good place to stop.